Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So, an Irish woman of advanced age visited her physician to ask his advice in reviving her husband's libido. What about trying Viagra? Asked the doctor. Not a chance, she said. He won't even take an aspirin. Not a problem, replied the doctor. Give him an Irish Viagra. It's when you drop the Viagra tablet into his coffee. He won't even taste it. Give it a try and call me in a week to let me know how things went. It wasn't a week later when she called the doctor who directly inquired as to her progress. The poor deer exclaimed. Oh, Jesus, it was horrid. Just terrible, doctor. Really, what happened? Asked the doctor. Well, I did as you advised and slipped it in his coffee and the effect was almost immediate. He jumped straight up with a twinkle in his eye and with his pants bulging fiercely. With one swoop of his arm, he sent the cups and tablecloth flying, ripped my clothes to tatters, and took me then and there passionately on the tabletop. It was a nightmare, I tell you, an absolute nightmare. Why so terrible? Asked the doctor. Do you mean the loving your husband provided wasn't good? The old lady replied, It was the best time I've had in 25 years. But I'm sure I'll never be able to show my face in Starbucks again. <laughs> so Mick met Patty in the street and said, Patty, Will you draw your bedroom curtains before making love to your wife in the future? Why? Patty asked. Because, said Mick, the whole street was laughing when they saw you making love yesterday. Patty said, stupid bastards, the laughs on them. I wasn't even home yesterday. <laughs> so John is walking down the street when he bumps into Teddy an old friend he hasn't seen in a while. They exchange pleasantries, and then Teddy says that he recently got a job as a lion tamer at the circus. John is surprised and blurts out, How are you going to be a lion tamer? As I recall, you used to be an accountant. Teddy says, The circus people told him that the lions know the drill and the tamer is essentially in there as a prop. Well... What if the lions start to get aggressive? Asks John. They said to use the chair. You use the chair to push them back. John interrupts. What if they're still aggressive? They gave the whip. And if I crack the whip, that should scare the lions and make them move off. John then asks. But what if the whip doesn't work? What will you do then? Well then, they said to reach into my pants pull out some shit and rub it in their eyes. How can you be sure there's going to be shit in your pants? Teddy sighs. They said I'm gonna have to trust them on that one. <laughs> so after their baby was born, a panicked father went to see the obstetrician. Doctor, the man said, I don't mind telling you, but I'm a little upset because my daughter has red hair. She can't possibly be mine. Nonsense, the doctor said, even though you and your wife both have black hair. One of your ancestors may have contributed red hair to the gene pool. It isn't possible, the man insisted. This can't be. Our families on both sides had jet black hair for generations. Well, said the doctor, let me ask you this. How often do you make love? The man seemed a bit ashamed. I've been working very hard for the past year. We only made love once or twice every few months. Well, there you have it, the doctor said confidently. It's rust. <laughs> so a guy went to a psychiatrist because he was having severe problems with his love life. The psychiatrist asked him a lot of questions, but didn't seem to be getting a clear picture of the problems. Finally, he asked, do you ever watch your girlfriend's face while you're making love? Well, yes, I did once, 
replied the man. Well, how did she look? Asked the doctor. Oh boy, he replied. She looked very angry. At this point, the psychiatrist felt that he was really getting somewhere, and he said, Well, that's very interesting. We must look into this further. Now, tell me, you say that you have only seen your girlfriend's face once during making love. That seems somewhat unusual. How did it occur that you saw her face that time? The guy replied, she was watching us through the window. <laughs> so a man and a woman who had never met before, but who were both married, found themselves assigned to the same sleeping cabin on a transcontinental train. Though initially embarrassed and uneasy over sharing a cabin, they went to bed, he in the upper berth and she in the lower. At 1 a.m. they were both still wide awake and they both knew it. He said, I'm sorry to bother you, but would you be willing to reach into the closet under your bed to get me a second blanket? I'm awfully cold. I have a better idea, she replied. She added, just for tonight, let's pretend that we're married. That's a great idea, he said, now totally aroused. Good, she replied. Go get your own damn blanket. After a moment of silence, he farted and didn't care. <laughs> so I was a very happy man. My wonderful girlfriend and I had been dating for over a year, and so we decided to get married. There was only one little thing bothering me. It was her beautiful younger sister. My prospective sister-in-law was 22, wore very tight miniskirts, and generally never weared a bra. She would regularly bend down when she was near me, and I always got more than a nice view. It had to be deliberate, because she never did it when she was near anyone else. One day, her little sister called and asked me to come over to check the wedding invitations. She was alone when I arrived, and she whispered to me that she had feelings and desires for me that she couldn't overcome. She told me that she wanted me just once before I got married and committed my life to her sister. Well, I was in total shock and couldn't say a word. She slowly took off all her clothes, apart from a tiny white thong, and said, I'm going upstairs to my bedroom, and if you want one last wild fling, just come up and get me. I was stunned and frozen in shock as I watched her go up the stairs. I stood there for a moment, then turned and made a beeline straight to the front door. I opened the door and headed straight towards my car. Lo and behold, my entire future family was standing outside, all clapping. With tears in his eyes, my father-in-law hugged me and said, We are very happy that you have passed our little test. We couldn't ask for a better man for our daughter. Welcome to the family. And the moral of this story is, always keep your condoms in your car. <laughs> so a guy is suffering from severe headaches for years with no relief. After trying all the usual cures, he's referred to a headache specialist by his family doctor. The doctor asks him what his symptoms are, and he replies, I get these blinding headaches, kind of like a knife across my scalp, and... He is interrupted by the doctor, and a heavy throbbing right behind the left ear? Yes, exactly. How did you know? Well, I am the world's greatest headache specialist, you know. But I myself suffered from that same type of headache for many years. It is caused by a tension in the scalp muscles. This is how I cured it. Every day, I would give oral to my wife. When she came, she would squeeze her legs together with all her strength, and the pressure would relieve the tension in my head. Try that every day for two weeks, and come back and let me know how it goes. Two weeks go by, and the man is back. Well... 
How do you feel? The doctor asked. Doc, I'm a new man. I feel great. I haven't had a headache since I started this treatment. I can't thank you enough. And by the way, you have a lovely home. <laughs> so a man in a Jaguar passed a Mini that had broken down by the side of the road. Being a kindly driver, he stopped and fixed a tow rope to it and began towing it to the nearest garage. After 10 minutes of towing, a Porsche passed them at high speed. The Jaguar driver was not going to be outdone by a Porsche, so forgetting that he had a Mini in tow, slammed his foot down and the Jaguar and Porsche indulged in a high-speed race down the road. The Mini and its occupant, trailing wildly about at the end of the rope, frantically trying to attract their attention and failing. A police car saw them and gave chase. The police driver radioed back to headquarters saying, Sarge, you'll never believe this. I've just seen a Porsche and a Jaguar neck and neck doing 150 and a bloke in a Mini flashing his lights, blowing his horn and trying to overtake them. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs>